Assalamualaikum to our lecturers Sir Shafiq bin Sulaiman and fellow friends. As a requirement for subject Law of the Sea LLB 01303, our group will present a case study titled The Ara Libertad Argentina vs Ghana. Our group members namely Adam Haikal, Lukman Hakim, Said Kamil, Saiful Azril and Hardy Ares. So basically the Ara Libertad is an Argentina Navy sailing ship of class A and one of the world's largest, fastest and tallest ships in the world. In this case, the Ara Libertad has been restricted in Ghana seas and the rest of the details will be provided in this presentation. So stay tuned. First of the case, on 29 and 30 November 2012, an application by Argentina for provisional measures against Ghana under Article 290 Clause 5 of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea was heard by the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. The application pertains to Ghana's ongoing detention of the Argentine warship Ara Libertad. On 2 October 2012, one of Argentina's creditors, NML Capital, successfully secured an order detaining the vessel from the Ghanaian High Court in Accra, and the vessel was detained in the Ghanaian port of Tema. The Argentine government's subsequent challenge to the, to the injunction on the basis of state immunity was unsuccessful. On 29 October 2012, the arbitration proceedings were commenced between Argentina against Ghana under Article Annex V11 of UN Clause, which provides for the resolution of disputes arising in connection with the interpretation and application of UN Clause by a five-member panel appointed by agreement of the parties. Argentina Argentina contends that Ghana's ongoing detention of the frigate violates Article 32 of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, as well as Article 18 Clause 1, Clause B, 87 and 90, which deal with the right of innocent passage in territorial waters and freedom of navigation on the high seas. Argentina thought that it lost provide interim remedies waiting the establishment of the ANET V11 Tribunal in its application for provisional measures in those proceedings, which was filed on 14 November 2012. Argentina is requesting an injunction compelling Ghana to unconditionally release the ship from the port of Tema and its territorial seas, as well as restore the vessel. To obtain for provisional measures, Argentina must demonstrate that the Annex V11 Tribunal will have prima facie jurisdiction over the dispute once it is established. Secondly, the measures are necessary and appropriate to protect the rights of the parties. And lastly, the urgency of the situation justifies granting such measures before the Annex V11 Tribunal is established. The scope of the waiver of immunity provisions in the bonds is also under question. Ghana has argued that the procedures in Ghanaian courts should be permitted to proceed. The Tribunal is working on a tight schedule and is likely to rule on the provisional measures application on December 15, 2012. Meanwhile, Argentina's appeal before the Ghanaian Court of Appeal is scheduled to be heard in January 2013 but it may possibly be accelerated. For the issues, whether there appear to be a prima facie basis for an arbitral tribunal's jurisdiction under Annex 7 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Second, whether the Republic of Ghana violates the international obligation to respect immunities from jurisdiction and execution under Article 32 of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and Article 3 of the Convention for the Unification and Certain Rules concerning the immunity of state own vessels 1926 whether the Republic of Ghana infringes the right of Argentina to sail out of seas under the authority of the coastal state and the right to freedom of navigation under Articles 18 Clause 1 Clause B, 87 Clause 1 Clause A, and 90 of United Nations Convention Law of the Sea. All parties' argument on Argentina argument are all that infringes the right guaranteed by the Convention and that the disagreement between Argentina and Ghana pretends to the interpretation and the implementation of the Convention, including Paragraph 18, Paragraph 1 Clause B, 32, 87, Paragraph 1 Clause A, and 90. The fourth arrest of the frigate prohibits Argentina from deploying this symbolic warship to exercise its navigational right as guaranteed by the Convention in the various maritime zones. According to Article 18, Paragraph 1, Clause P of the Convention, the definition of the innocent passage 
encompasses not only the right to proceed to the internal waters and that this letter right has been denied to Argentina in the case of the Frigia Ara Labour Type. One of the rights for which it seeks protection is the freedom of navigation on the high seas as protected by Article 87 of the Convention and that Ghana's rights of the Frigia Ara Labour Type prohibits it from enjoying this basic freedom. Article 32 of the Convention includes the phrase nothing in this convention rather than nothing in this part, which demonstrates conclusively that its application goes beyond the section concerning the territorial sea. Argentina believes that Article 32 of the Convention regulates the protection of Russia over the whole geographical area of the Convention. Article 236 of the Convention will specify that the provision of the Convention relating to the protection and preservation of the marine environment do not apply to any warship or naval auxiliary other vessel or aircraft owned or operated by a state and used solely for government non-commercial purposes. The immunity of Russia extends to the entire maritime area, citing in particular provisions of the Convention relating to the protection and preservation of the marine environment such as Article 211 Paragraph 3. While well, Ghana argues that there is no dispute between Ghana and Argentina over the interpretation and implementation of the Convention and therefore the Tribunal lacks of authority to order the temporary remedies requested by Argentina. The Annex 7 Arbitral Tribunal lacks jurisdiction over the matter filled by Argentina on the basis that none of the rules relevant to conduct happening in internal seas are found in Article 18, Paragraph 1, Clause B, 32, 87, Paragraph 1, Clause A, and 90. Paragraph 87 and 90 of the Convention pertain to freedom of the high seas and the right to navigation on the high seas respectively and are not immediately relevant to the immunity of a warship in internal waters. The coastal state has complete territorial sovereignty over internal waters and that any foreign vessel stationed in internal seas is subject to the legislative, administrative, judicial, jurisdictional authorities of the coastal state. The immunity of a warship in domestic seas does not require the interpretation and the implementation of the convention. They can only be found outside the convention under the norms of customary or conventional international law. Article 236 of the convention is restricted to the conservation and preservation of the maritime environment, which is not an issue in this instance. For the judgment, according to the tribunal, the following provisional measures are anonymously prescribed pending a judgment by the NSCI Arbitral Tribunal under the USC Clause, Paragraph 295, Paragraph 5, Ghana shall release the frigate around the immediately and unconditionally guarantee that the Frigate at Ara Libeta is a commander and crew are permitted to leave the port of Tema and the marine area under Ghana's control and ensure that the Frigate at Ara Libeta is resupplied to the DN. Anonymously, it comes to a decision that Argentina and Ghana should every put up a preliminary document now no longer later than 20 December 2012 to the tribunal and authorize the president to request such a statistic as he may or so don't forget suitable after the date. <coughs> Anonymously, comes to the decision that every celebration should end here is very on course. For the exemption of worship in inland water is not mentioned in UNCLOS Article 18, Paragraph 1b on the importance of passages in territorial water. <coughs> No in UN Clause Article 87 and 90 on the right and freedom of navigation on the high seas. The next point is Court of Arbitration based on NSBII. This conversation does not alter the immunity of warship, say Article 32 of the Maritime Law Convention, without clarifying the geographical limit of its application. But there is disagreement between the party regarding the applicability of Article 32. Uh, the court considered that there seems to be a dispute between the parties regarding the interpretation or application of the convention. Article 32 provides the basis of establishing prima facie jurisdiction of other arbitral tribunal under the NSBII. A warship is defined as a ship that belongs to a country armed forces identified away owing to its nationality and is legally under the direction of an officer. According to Article 29 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the washi reflect the flag rising nation sovereignty. So, according to UNC Clause Article 279, parties shall settle dispute between parties regarding the interpretation or application of the Convention through peaceful means, in accordance with Article 2.3 of the United Nations Charter. <coughs> so, in action that violently prevent washi from carrying out the mission. And responsibility will be result in conflict that could jeopardize friendly relations between nations. For the ratio descendant, provisional measure under Article 290 Clause 5 of the United Nations in Convention of the Law of the Sea, UNC Clause, determine the issue in this case appear to be a prima facie basis for an arbitral tribunal jurisdiction under NSBII with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The of the Arabic case. A dicta is a comment, suggestion, or even an observation made by a judge in an opinion that is not necessary to resolve or bind a specific case. 
The first judge, which is Judge Lucky, thinks that the Ara Libertas immunity should only be decided after the disputes and arguments have been thoroughly evaluated by the court or tribunal that will be selecting the case on its merit. He also viewed prima facie that, tribu that the tribunal had the authority to hear and decide the request that came from Argentina, knowing that there were some disputes over the interpretation of Articles 18, Paragraph 1, 87, Paragraph 1, and 32 of the Convention. Other than that, Judge Lucky then believes that the affidavits that have been presented in this case should also be commented on or be observed. The next one should be Judge Rao. Even though Judge Rao voted in favour of the court ruling in the first place, he expresses concern regarding the legal status of the Ara Libertas detention in the Ghanaian port of Tema. As noted in the judgment of the case, Ara Libertas visit to the port of Tema was the sign of the diplomatic notes exchanged between the state of Argentina and Ghana. However, Ghana had sanctioned the warship's arrival with a note verbal dated 4 June 2012. Judge Rao questioned what is the justification behind the act of sanctioning the warship. The last one would be a joint separate opinion from Judge Wolfram and Judge Court. They stated disagreement on some issues that happened in the tribunal. Given the tribunal's reasoning as to whether the arbitral tribunal to be established under Article 290, Paragraph 5 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, had prima facie jurisdiction to decide on the merits of the case. Little comment regarding the issue of the Arab Limited cases. There are many elements of law that were being discussed in the case of Arab Libertad that can be learned, especially regarding the rules in the law of the sea. One of the rules is about the practice of provisional measures under the jurisdiction of the tribunal. Provisional measures can be described as a temporary remedy granted under special circumstances. However, for this to be fulfilled, there are a few requirements that need to be fulfilled which are the preservation of the parties. The second one is the irreparable harm that may be inflicted by the dispute and also the last one is that the elements of urgency. Preservation of parties means that the applicants need to have a legal rights in the issue at the hand and we can see that in this case both of the parties are members of the convention and therefore tribunal has a jurisdiction regarding this issue. Next slide. Moving on to the next element, for the arbitration to proceed, they need to prove that the dispute that arrives may lead to irreparable harm. As we can see in the Ara Libertad case, Argentina has claimed that the detention of their warship in Ghana's port has challenged the sovereignty status of their country. And by this fact, the court did consider that the damage may be irreparable if this dispute didn't come into further uh, progress. For the last element, the disputes must uh, need the urgency elements of dispute settlement for the arbitration to be held. This element is very important because it was a main point for the arbitral proceeding to be held. The urgency can be mean that if the dispute is in the stage of where there is a need for an instant final word in order to ensure that there are no undesirable outcomes from the disputes. And based on this case, we agree with the decision by tribunal court as uh, to help the provisional measures as we know that the ex detention was made by the Ghana High Court of VRC has made the situation needs an urgent proceeding for the matters to be discussed. And now we move on to the next slide. The second element for is for the supper's judgment is that in the matters of worship immunity. Article 32 states that the government owned non-commercial boats and worship are immune from all except the flag state jurisdiction are never subject to the authority of the other country. It means that in this case, the worship from Argentina should be receiving full immunity in accordance with the general international law. Other than that, Article 95 also can be called into this commentary as it was also related to the issue at the hand. As stated in the article, it mentioned that worship in the high sea have complete immunity from jurisdiction of any state other than the flag state. For the fact state above, I would agree with the court decision on the supposed case uh, as the immunity of shield of vessel was already inscribed in the general international law and the tribunal also does not have any legitimate jurisdiction to handle the rising issue. As a conclusion, the Ara Libertad case is an important case where we can see many issues being discussed there. Uh, this case started with the detention of Argentina frigate by the Ghanaian authorities. This shows how important the establishment of a tribunal court to act as a third party in solving the dispute between two sovereign countries. This is vital because the law that was made under the treaties tend to bring a different interpretation by other parties. 
and by the establishment of tribunal, uh, arbitral tribunal, it can ensure the peaceful relation between the both country in the future without any conflict. I think that's all from our group. Thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.